Judges preaching the gospel in public Reaching the masses, jumping Bible is all that we touching Esau be lynching Had us in slavery, gotta get vengeance All these codes they be simping Making no difference We taking shots, got him pimping Look at these pastors leading the jakes They ain't never been valid Talking about Catholic On the corner, I step out the capsule Sakara, we act up Break to the Lord, cause it's about to get tragic When in Orlando, I ball like the magic Urban Gorilla, Javanchi, the fabric Trust in your highway, so everlasting Man, man. Oh, man. Nah. Yeah. 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 That's all praises to the Heavenly Father and the name of His only begotten Son, who the Lord ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. We know the promise of the Lord come in week in and week out to teach you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, your true nationality, heritage, and ethnicity, which is being a Hebrew Israelite according to biblical prophecy, archaeology, and history, man. Right. It also prophesied the downfall and destruction of this wicked place you know as America, also known as Mystery Babylon in the scriptures, man. Right. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 17. Yeah. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Yahushua, uh -huh. giving thanks to God, and the Father by Him. Right, so we give all praises, all honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father for giving us the ability to teach His people, man. So called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, who are His chosen people who need to repent and follow God's commandments, man. All right. Shout out to everybody that came out to the Erica Badu, the Erica Badu concert. Raise your hand if you're here to see her sing, man. No? Y'all not here to see Erica Badu? Nobody? Y'all turned down for the, own, the same concert y'all paid for, man. Give me uh, Psalms 137 and 3. You got that? Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms of the 149, verse 7. Uh -huh. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. Uh -huh. And punt no. Verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. This is the song that we need to be singing. Right. We need to be praising the Most High God uh -huh. in all truth and in all sincerity, man. All right, all you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, this is a song you need to learn. This is a song you need to be singing your heart out to, man. Read it again. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 6. Uh -huh. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, uh -huh. and a two-edged sword in their hand. And a, a two-edged sword in their hand. I've seen a lot of brothers and sisters walk past us today and say, oh, look, they strike me this, that, and the third, right? With a two-edged sword in their hand. Who could tell me the most powerful weapon we have out here today? It's the word of God. That's the two-edged sword that we have in our hand, man, because it cuts both ways. You understand? This is the two-edged sword that's going to bring us out of captivity. This is the two-edged sword that's going to bring freedom and uh, uh, bring freedom to our people, man. All right? And, and, and bring us out of this captivity. Give us that, that independence that we really need in this earth, man. Read it again. Psalms 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth uh -huh. and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance. To execute vengeance. To execute vengeance, man. We came out here to teach our people, to warn our people, right? To let them know that it's time to start executing vengeance, man. All right? To execute vengeance and to bring forth what God wants in this earth, man. If you're praying the Lord's Prayer for His will to be done on earth as it, as it is in heaven, you're praying for America to be destroyed. You understand? You're praying for the next Erica Badu concert to be in Israel, man. All right? You're praying for your rulership and white enslavement, man. All right, go ahead. And, and, and punishments upon the people. And what? And punishments upon the people. See, this is the song that we're going to learn, man. When the Most High God sends his son back, this is the song that we're going to sing our hearts out to, man. All right? That vengeance that he will put in our heart. That vengeance that his son is waiting to come and execute, man. All right? Keep going in that. Verse 8. To bind their kings. To what? To bind their kings. To what? To bind their kings. It says to bind their kings, man. Put Donald Trump in chains. Put, Bi put Biden in chains. All the way down to the lowest Edomite. Put them all in chains, man. You understand? The one that you think is in most power is the one that's going to have the least amount of power and it will be exterminated off the face of this earth, man. You understand? This is the song that we look forward to hearing. This is the song that the saints will be singing and serving the Most High God. You understand, go ahead. To bind their kings with chains uh -huh. and their nobles with fetters of iron. Which one of you brothers and sisters are, are ready to bind your oppressors in chains, man? Which one of y'all... Right? Pan-Africans, right? All praise to the most high. Give that brother a round of applause, man. The Lord put the spirit on that brother to learn what vengeance is, man. And to love himself over the damn oppressor, man. 
We're done loving white people, man. Loving white people hasn't got you nowhere. You understand? Everybody want to be Pan-African until it's time to really stand up for what being Pan-African means. Just because you put on a damn cape don't mean that you black, man. Are you black at heart? No, because you're still serving the goddamn white man every day of your damn life. Stop serving the white man and start to serve God. Maybe something will change in your damn life, man. All right, read. Verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment written. The judgment written. The judgment. The judgment that's written, man. So this is not something that we came up with. Right? This is not something that we plotted and say, let's just go tell black people to hate white people. No, that's not what it's about. Right. It's about telling you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians who you really are. So that this judgment can be, in fact, executed. You're not going to be able to execute the proper judgment if you don't know what that judgment is. You're not going to be able to be free if you don't even know what freedom looks like. Right? Niggas so, so ready to celebrate July 4th, right? But you don't know what independence really is. You don't have your own autonomy. You don't have your own government. You don't have your own military. You ain't even got your own damn thoughts. Everything you think was given to you by your damn oppressor. And any and anytime something comes up that goes against that, you think it's crazy. It's crazy that Jesus can be a so-called black man. It's crazy that you, in fact, will be the rulers of this earth forever and ever under who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Our people can barely fathom that, man. Right? Right? Go ahead. To execute upon them the judgment written, uh -huh. this honor have all his saints. This what? This honor have all his saints. It says that this is an honor, man. And this right here, teaching you this honor, is the beginning of that freedom. This right here, teaching you about this honor, is the beginning of that independence. This is the beginning of that vengeance, man. Because as we come out here to continuously build this spiritual temple, it's tearing down their kingdom every single second, man. Right? Let's read this right quick. John, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 3. Read it out. For they that carry us away captive. It says the ones that carried us away captive, the ones that brought us into slavery, read required of us a song. They required of us to sing one of those songs from Jerusalem so that they can wag the finger at us, oh, look at those nigger songs that they're singing. Well, there's a new song that's going to be sent, sung, man. And these white people are going to fear that song, man. These Ethiopians are going to fear that song, man. You understand? These Arabs are going to fear that song, man. All right? All you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians need to learn what this song is. It's about executing vengeance on your oppressor, man. All right? Erica Badu, she sing her ass off. She a great singer, man. Right? But we gonna sing together. And that song is gonna be about executing vengeance on the oppressor, man. Alright? Right. All right? There was a couple... I ain't gonna say it. All right? Go ahead. John. And they that waste, wasted us uh -huh. required of us mirth. It says they that wasted us required of us mirth, man. Right? White people see us gathering for all these concerts, all these sports gatherings, right? When are we going to gather to take back what belongs to us? When are we going to stop talking about how black lives matter and demonstrate how black lives matter, man? Right? Can anybody tell me where all the marches have gone? Can anybody tell me what happened to all the rappers that were donating to this cause and donating to that cause? Where are they found? Where are they to be found? Absolutely nowhere. They got the tax right off and that was it, man. Right? Everybody, they follow a trend, and once that trend is over with, it's nothing, man. If the hashtag don't matter, then it don't mean nothing to them, right? If the hashtag ain't trending, it don't mean nothing to them, man. But guess what? Our brothers, even all the way down to the young ones, your life matters to us, right? That's why we're out here to begin with, is to help protect you and show you what real freedom and independence looks like, man. To show you what the army of God looks like, man, right? And David said, who is this Philistine to think he can stand against the army of the living God? You understand? Can't nothing stand against the army of the living God, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, man. The true Hebrew Israelites. All right, read that again. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, uh -huh. saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Uh -huh. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How are we going to sing a song in a strange land, man? We don't belong here. We belong in Jerusalem, man. We belong from the Nile to the Euphrates, man. We belong on top. We don't belong on the bottom. 
We got to learn the song that will get us up there, man. We got to learn the song that's going to bring us true mirth and true happiness, man. All right, Erica Badu, she's going to make you feel good for a little bit. But this song of vengeance, brother, when that gets into your heart, when the Lord puts that spirit into your heart, that's going to really make you happy. When you learn you're an Israelite and you repent and you keep God's commandments, man. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 56, verse 5. Uh -huh. My enemies make trouble for me uh -huh. all day long. They are always thinking up some way to hurt me. They gather in hiding places and watch everything I do, hoping to kill me. You see that? That's what they're looking forward to. And guess what? They don't just kill blacks and Hispanics physically. They kill us every day, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Uh -huh. And that hurts us more and more every single day. Uh -huh. Right? To think that we can co-mingle with the damn same, the same damn person that oppressed us and enslaved us. How is it that crackers get to have that ability to go to an Erica Badu concert? No white person should feel safe at an Erica Badu concert. Man. Let me be. Let's be serious, right? Everybody, right? Everybody, everybody. But where are you included in that? Everybody. Nowhere to be found, man. So-called blacks and Hispanics, when it comes to loving everyone, we're not included in that. Don't nobody care about loving a black and an Hispanic. When they talk about loving everybody, they're just trying to uh, coerce you into loving them and convincing you, oh, don't worry about what I did to you. It's okay. Right? Just go to the Erica Badu concert, feel good for a couple hours, and forget about the fact that you were enslaved here in America. Right? Sister, you look great all dressed up. Can I ask you a quick question? Sure. What's your ethnicity? Do you know? Do yes. Why would you ask me because that's very important to learn who you are. You know, well, who are you? You're African American, right? Because, huh? She's not African American. You're right. You're from the tribe of Judah, all right? An Israelite. So we're planning to keep God's commandments, man. Right? You got a question, sir? No? It's all right. You know, if you're feeling shy, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? We're just out here to teach so-called blacks and Hispanics who they are. Teach them that they're the Israelites. They got to repent and keep God's commandments, man. Right? You got something? Come on, let's, let's keep going here right quick. Psalms 137, verse 3. Bring it out! For there that they... Salakia, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing a song? Sing, Salakia, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. See that? We've forgotten who we are, man. We've been, we've been dragged uh, so far away from where we belong that we want to be a part of everything else except what belongs to us, man. Give me Romans 3, right? And that is a part of us losing our advantage. We fight in tooth and nail every day to regain something that belongs to us. We fight tooth and nail every day to get something that honestly is as easy as putting strings on the end of your shirt. Something as easy as not buying a damn pork chop can make you a king on this earth, brother. You understand? Something as simple as not eating catfish will make you a true princess on this earth. Right? All you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians learn that you're the Hebrew Israelites. Right? Walk with that, that courage that the Most High God will give you when, he, when you start following His law, statutes, and commandments. You can truly walk as a king. You can truly walk as a princess when you're acting like one and you're behaving like the royalty you know you are. All of our people know that we're royalty. When are our people going to start acting like royalty, man? That, that, that royalty don't come from Pan-Africanism and e Egyptology. They're not the true rulers of this earth. We are. They want to be like us. We don't want to be like them. Right? Go ahead, Romans 3. This is the book of Romans 3, cha chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Much every way. Much every way. It says much every way is an Israelite superior. That's Deuteronomy 7 and 6 right there in the, in the New Testament, man. To tell you that you Israelites are better 
in every single way, no matter who you're comparing yourself to, man. Right. Paul had to remind the Israelites in Rome the same way we got to remind you Israelites in America. You're better than everybody, so start acting like it, man. Right. All right, read it again. Romans 3, verse 1. What advantage then have a Jew? Uh -huh. And what profit is there of circumcision? Uh -huh. Much every way. Free. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Because unto them, unto us, the Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, what makes us the greatest people on this earth is the fact that God's laws belong to us. That we know what a God is supposed to act like. We know what a ruler is supposed to look like. We know how to properly, properly behave because God gave us rules to follow, man. But America is a place without rules, right? America tells you do what you want to do, do what your heart makes you feel good, right? As long as you have a smile on your face, it doesn't matter what you're doing. And that's America's plan to keep you down. That's America's plan to keep you a slave without chains. Right, you got something? Go ahead. That's the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. Bring it out. But you are the chosen race. You are what? But you are the chosen race. And that's out of the New Testament again. The Bible. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians. You are the chosen race. All right? Those people in Israel right now, they're not the chosen race. You know what the, you know what the people in Israel right now are chosen for? Destruction, man. That's what the Caucasian race is chosen for. Absolute destruction. You understand? There's, there's going to come a time when they see us walking on the sidewalk, they're going to have to lay down and be that doormat that they, they so rightfully uh, deserve, man. They're going to have to be walked over, right? The same way they walked over us. I'm talking to you, sir. I'm talking to you. Okay? Go ahead. This is the book of Second Ezra. Chapter 15, verse 21. Bring it out. I will pay them back. What? I will pay them back. The Lord told us that he will pay them back, man. All right? That recompense that they deserve, God's going to repay that on them, man. And even double. Right? This the song. These are the songs that we look forward to hearing. These are the songs we bump in with the bass. You understand? Go ahead. I will pay them back uh -huh. with the same harsh treatment they have always given to my chosen people. You see that? That same harsh treatment, man. Right? We're not going to do it unrighteously, right? We know these heathens, they can't, they, they, can't, they can't help themselves but to do something disgusting, right? But the Canaanites, they're going to wish they had the fate of the Edomites by the time God's done with them, right? They're not going to be, they're going to be uh, eating dust when, uh, by the time God is done with them, man, all right? It ain't a, it, it ain't a color thing, man, because guess what? You Canaanites, y'all got to get it too. You Ethiopians, you got to get it too. You Aboriginal uh, uh, damn Australians, y'all got to get it too. You Arabs, y'all going to get it too. Y'all going to be right alongside the white man in those damn chains. You understand? All right? Shout out to the beautiful sisters out here tonight, man. All right? We got to let y'all know we love y'all. All right? The Most High God wants you to repent. Make sure you keep his commandments. Whatever you do tonight, don't do nothing wicked. Okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Whatever you got. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, uh -huh. to him will I give power over the nation. That's what we're looking forward to, man. Receiving that power that the Most High God wants to give to us, man. Right? We've been told all our life in a Christian church, oh, God's waiting on you. God's waiting on you. Oh, no, excuse me. We're waiting on God. We're waiting on God, right? But it's the other way around. God is, in fact, waiting on us to get right, man. That's right. Okay? We've been told things backwards all of our life. We've been told Jesus is white. We've been told the chosen people are white. God is white. Right? Do what you want to do. And then you start to read the Bible and we see something separate. We see something different, right? The Bible tells us don't do what you want to do. Do what God said. Right? Can I get an amen? Yeah. See that? <laughs> okay? All you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native and Seminole Indians, this lesson right here is for y'all. You want, if you really want peace on earth, you keep God's commandments, sister. All right, world peace is going to come by the rulership of so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native and Seminole Indians. God chose the people, the Hebrew Israelites. That rulership is going to come by way of keeping God's commandments and being righteous. If anybody truly wanted world peace, 
you would stop living wickedly. You understand? But people don't know what peace is. People wouldn't know what peace is if it slapped them in the face. And that's why God got to come out here and slap everybody in the face to wake you up. Because y'all been sleeping. You've been snoozing the alarm too damn long. All right, go ahead. Verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers. Even as I received of my father. Even as Amashach Yahweh received of his father. How you doing, sir? What's your ethnicity on your father's side? Cameroon, Africa? Where is that? South Africa, North, West Africa? Okay. Would you say your ancestors were troubled by the transatlantic slave trade? No doubt. I'm no doubt. Pre no doubt. I'm former president of the Are you familiar with the Negro land map at all? A little bit. You can tell me more about it right All right. Now. Well, we're out here to tell so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians that they come from the various 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay. Okay. And the plan, in order for us to get back at what belongs to us, we have to keep the Most High God's law, statutes, and commandments. So something as simple, you see these strings that these brothers got hang hanging from their shirts? Yeah. Something as simple as that would put that crown on your head. You understand? As far as your diet goes, how's that? How's that? You eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, any of those things? Sometimes. Sometimes. Something as simple as not doing that anymore would put that crown on your head. That's right. You understand? Something as simple as not lying to your fellow brother or sister would put that crown on your head. Something as simple as keeping something known as Passover by eating lamb once a year would put that crown on your head. Okay, okay, okay. Something as simple as sleeping in a tent for seven days and during a certain time of the year would put that crown on your head. Okay, okay. You understand? Yeah, okay. So if you're looking for rulership, look towards the rules of the Most High God in the Bible. In the Bible. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 132, verse 12. Bring it out. If thy children will keep my covenant. If your children will keep the covenant, the promise, the deal, the contract, right? We signed the contract in blood. If our children would keep that contract, read, and my testimony, uh -huh. that I shall teach them, uh -huh. their children also shall sit upon the throne. Shall what? Shall sit upon the throne. So if you want your children, your, your brother's children, to sit upon the throne, we got to keep that covenant and keep that contract. That's why you see all these brothers from all over, the, all over the earth come out here to Atlanta to teach their people who they are and what they got to do to serve the Most High God. That's right. All right? Through the Bible. Through the Bible, absolutely. All right. That's our book. Okay. All right? Just in case you didn't know that. Okay. You understand? Our ancestors wrote that book. Okay. It's about our movements, right, and what our God is going to do to save us as he has done in the past. Right. You understand? All right. God bless you, All right. What's your name, brother? Graham. Clifton Graham. Graham? All right. Pleasure to meet you, brother. Hope you have a good night, man. Make sure you repent. Keep the commandments. Look into that information. All right? All praise you. How about Shimmy? I was shy, man. Go ahead, King. That's the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 10 of the GNT. If you love others, you will never do them wrong. Uh -huh. To love then is to obey the whole law. You see that? Obeying the whole entire law of God is what is going to demonstrate. Matter of fact, since you brought that up, give me 1 John 3 and 18. Right? How y'all sisters doing tonight? All right? See? that She's doing great. You understand? Give that sister a round of applause, man. All praise the most high. All right? We are here to let y'all know y'all the Israelites, so-called blacks and Hispanics, we got to repent and keep God's commandments, man. Keep the whole law so we don't end up like this guy, man. Fake Backstreet Boy. All right. The Backstreet Boy that lost his job over here. <laughs> Go ahead. This is the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Bring it out. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue. You see that? We're talking to y'all across the street, too, now. This word is for y'all across the street, you so-called blacks and Hispanics, man. Nice. Let us not love just in word or in tongue, all right? We have to love in action, man, by keeping God's commandments. Read. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, uh -huh. but in deed uh -huh. and in truth. But in what? But in deed and in truth. But in deed and in truth, man. A lot, a lot of people, not just our own people, have no clue what truth is, right? And a lot of people despise the truth. You have, you have people today that are saying, oh, I lied to you to, you know, keep you safe. Huh? You lied to me to keep my feelings safe? You lied to me because you cared about me? What kind of care, what kind of love is that, that you would lie to me about something? Right? Why would you lie to me to keep me safe? 
telling me the truth is what's going to set me free. Right? Telling me the truth is what's going to keep me safe. Right? Because that's going to show me that you really love me. You would go out of your way to tell me the truth no matter how much it may hurt. Right? No matter how much I might like it, you're going to tell me the truth because it's going to make me do better and it'll be better for me. Right? What about you, brothers and sisters? Would you rather somebody tell you a lie or tell you a, tell you the truth? Huh? Tell you the truth, right, sister? Now ask yourself, how many times have you lied to someone? Mmm. Right? We got to think about that. If we want people to tell us the truth, we got to start to tell the truth. Right? Go ahead. Job 625 CEV. Uh -huh. The truth is always painful. The what? The truth is always painful. Right? The truth might hurt. It might cut. Right? But it'll make you a better person to help build you up. You understand? Us telling you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians who you really are, right? And what's going to happen if you don't repent, that truth may hurt, but hopefully it wakes you up. Hopefully you see what's going on in America, and you know that Putin going to send Satan 1 and Satan 2 over here real soon. All right? Whatever country y'all going to, that building about to be in shambles if you don't repent, man. You understand? That building is going to get destroyed. Hopefully not with you in it. You understand? There's a story in the Bible with the Captain Jehu. He burned a whole building on fire for people that worship the Baal. If y'all can, if y'all continue to worship false idols, man, that same building gonna be put on fire, man, and you're gonna burn inside of it, man. All right. All you so-called Blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians need to repent tonight and immediately, right away, need to repent. All right. Because your life is on the line. Your parents' life is on the line. Your children's life is on the line. Your brother's children's life is on the line. You understand? You can keep your family safe so long as you keep God's commandments. All right? You have a question, ma'am? You love Jesus? Oh, okay. I'll praise to the most high. Well, which Jesus do you love? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, one, oh, one day, not today. <laughs> you know she's the goddamn devil the Bible speaks of. Oh, my goodness. What? Oh, my God. I see it. That, God, that dog is traumatized. No, she's not. She is. I would be traumatized. I'm traumatized. I'm already talking to you. All right. <laughs> you better tell him Jesus is real, honey. Jesus Christ. All right, well, the black Jesus hates you, okay? The black Jesus hates your guts and is going to be your slave master, all right? And these two sisters might be his wives. <laughs> Acts chapter 23, verse uh, 5 in the NOT. God will slap you, you corrupt hypocrite. You see that? God already slapped her, okay? Slapped her a silly, man. All right. I love Jesus Christ. Everybody loves Jesus Christ till it's time to do what Jesus Christ did. Right? right? What, would the, what would she have done if Jesus Christ was really here? Right? What would she have done? She, would, she wouldn't have stopped and been so happy. People think they're going to be happy when Jesus returns. You're going to be scared shitless. You okay? Go ahead. This is the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 21. Bring it out. Submit to God. Real quick, sister. What you think about what I just said? I heard you. I saw you listening. What you think about what I just said? You listening? All right. Learn that we're so-called blacks and Hispanics. We're God's chosen people for the various 12 tribes of Israel. We all need to repent and keep God's commandments. Hopefully you heard that. All right, read it again. This is the book of Job, chapter 22, verse 21. Uh -huh. Submit to God, and you will have peace. Mm -hmm. Then things will go well for you. Listen to his instructions and store them in your heart. Jeez, I got to stop you. Oh, praise to the most high God. All right. If you don't see things going well in your life, right, maybe you got to check yourself and look and see if you're following God's instructions, man. And guess what, brother? Maybe you feel you're on top of the world, but you better check yourself and see who's blessing you or possibly even cursing you. Right? Having a million dollars in your bank account don't mean that you're blessed. Being able to ride around in a Bentley all on the weekends doesn't mean that you're blessed. That's right. You understand? Being out of America and being in your homeland, that means that you're blessed. Right. Being freed by the Most High God, that means that you're blessed, man. Right. And to receive that blessing is to follow his instructions. This message is to you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians. All right? Everybody else, the rest of y'all nations, y'all kick rocks, man, and take your shoes off when you do it. 
All right, go ahead. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. You see that? Everybody's hungry and everybody's thirsty, but it's for the wrong stuff, man. All right? Make sure that you hunger for the, uh, the, the living bread that the Most High God is ready to provide. All right? Don't eat that stale bread that the Christian church has given you. Right? Don't eat that stale moldy bread the Catholic church has given you. You understand? What kind of religion is this? What kind of religion is this? All right? This is a, this is a culture of so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians. We're out here to demonstrate that we are God's chosen people, the Hebrew Israelites. All right? This isn't your typical Sunday church Christians that tell you to follow the Bible and don't do it themselves. All right? These are the prophets of the Lord that you see and read about in the Bible. You understand? Does that answer your question, brethren? Would you say that you, you see that, that, that postcard in your hand? Look at the chart on there, right? Look on the chart and tell me if you identify with any of those things you see on that chart. Okay, what would you say your ethnicity is? A Baptist? Now that's a religion. That's not an ethnic background. What is your race? Uh, African American. African American, right? So at the top of this chart here, you would see African American, and above that, you see the word Judah. All right. Through uh, through study of biblical prophecy, archaeology, and history, majority of so-called African Americans would in fact be from the tribe of Judah. That's right. When you learn it, what's your name, brother? Uh, Joseph. Joseph. Okay. So, Joseph, when you learn that you're from the tribe of Judah, all right, you say it with a little bit more umph, right? Say it with a little bit more courage, all right? What did Judah tell in the, uh, in the line? What did Judah tell? <laughs> right? That's how you say that you're a Judah. Next time somebody asks you, Joseph, what's your ethnicity? You're not a Baptist. You're a Hebrew Israelite from the tribe of Judah. And you say that with your chest out. You understand? All right, all praise to the most high. Repent and keep God's commandments. All right. Let's the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. We know that the Most High God, right, the God of the Bible, we know he is in the midst of Israel, man. Only the Most High God in heaven can bring brothers from the streets and back to the streets to teach people about him. Back to the same exact streets that we would be selling dope on, we're teaching the Bible on. And we're getting rid of and converting those same drug dealers we used to hang out with. You understand? Those same brothers and sisters, right, that used to be pimping and tricking on the corner, are now still on the corner, but in righteousness, keeping and teaching God's commandments. You understand? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Give this beautiful black couple a round of applause, man. All praise to the most. We love to see it. Okay? We love to see beautiful black couples together. Make sure you stay well forever. All right? And sister, you treat that brother right. All right? All right? That brother probably been walking. You give him a foot rub when he gets to the crib, man. Okay? Repent and keep God's commandments, man. All right? Go ahead. Yeah, sister, a foot rub. He may need a head rub, but you know what I'm saying? Same thing. <laughs> All right? The point is, is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminarians to repent and keep God's commandments. All right? Go ahead. God, Joel 2 and 27 from the top. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, uh -huh. and none else. And what? And, and none else. else. And none else. Did you know that the God of the Bible is only for so-called blacks and Hispanic sisters? Brother, did you know that? Did you know that God only loves us? Did you know that God is willing to kill other nations for you? Okay? All you need to do is repent and keep his commandments. Right? And God will fight for you. You ain't got to fight no more. You understand? You don't have to wake up as a black woman in America and feel afraid for your life. Because the Most High God has provided you men that will help and fight with you and for you, man. You understand? You have brothers that will come out here to protect the nation in the name of the King Hamashiach Yahweh Okay? Go ahead. You got something else? Abel's 3 and 1. Uh -huh. People of Israel, uh -huh. listen to this message. People of Israel. Matter of fact, give me Psalm 34 and 11. How y'all doing? Y'all out here making that bread? Y'all yeah. out here making that bread? Yeah. All right. All praise to the most high. Make sure you keep God's commandments when you're doing it. All right. I don't want to I don't want to see no half shots in those bottles, man. Make sure they full shots. You know, it's full shots. <laughs> okay. 
We gotta have that that true balance. All right. Tell my them right there. Oh, pray. I see you recording. You got a question, sir? No, you just listening. All right. Well, you see that the, the postcard you got in your hand, right? Turn it around. Turn it around. Where would you? Like? No, turn it around. There you go. The brother got it. See, we, the men need to leave, right? <laughs> uh, where would you identify with it on yourself in the chart? How would you identify? What on that chart would you identify with as your as far as your ethnicity goes? African American. What about you, brother? Judah. Judah. See, he knew the word. Get up, brother! He knew the answer. He knew the answer. He said, "I'm not African American. I'm a child of God." That's okay, sister. That's okay. All right, but we but, but we see that the man, right? As God put it, the man got to be in charge, and that brother is led. That did, that wasn't revealed to you by flesh and blood, right? A lot of people would just read the African American part, but you went directly to Judah, right? Do you guys believe in Jesus Christ? Uh, yes and no. What, what, tell me about the no part. Tell me about the no part. I have my question. Okay, and ask your questions. The prophets are here. That's right. That's my question. Uh, I think that would be too deep right now. No, brother, there's no such thing. I understand, but we are on our way. You're on your way? I just want to enjoy oh my God. Okay, I'll tell you this, right? Any any misconceptions you have, you may have about Jesus Christ, let me start by saying this. Let me get that. Let me start by saying this. When I say Jesus Christ, I don't mean this goddamn guy. That's right. Okay? This guy, all right, this guy is going to be a slave. That's right. Okay? That Jesus is a homosexual, and God is going to kill him, okay? You understand? Now, the real Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh Shah Mashiach, right, in the, in the Hebrew, he looks like you, but just with, you know, some hair on his head, you know what I'm saying? That's the Jesus I'm talking about. You, you got questions about him, you don't kind of believe in him? Would you would you tell me? We do know Jesus black. I'm sorry. We do know Jesus black. That's fantastic. That, that's that, to me. That's really what matters. At the end right. Of the day. Um, exactly what happened. You know, what do you mean? Exactly how things happened. How things played out. Like happened. when he was alive. Yeah. There was all the things. Like his. Happened. You're talking about his miracles. Yeah. All the things. Like, it it's like oh maybe they happened maybe they didn't. Precisely. Right. Okay, well listen, stuff like that obviously is going to be based on faith. Either you're going to believe it or you're not going to believe it, right? Right? But this is the point. Outside of biblical proof, we have things known as secular history. Right? One thing we know for sure is that this man did live. Because outside of the Bible, you have people known, I believe his name is Philo, and then you have, uh, what's the other guy? With the, Tertullian and then the one with the J. Josephus, right? Yes. So you have other historians, first century historians, that attest to his his uh, his life, that he was a real person. So that right there lets you know, okay, he was real. He did live. Amen. And on that note, we got to go. All right. Well, the point is that you guys learned that you're Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Judah. You have to repent and keep God's commandments. All right. All right, praise to the Most High. Enjoy the concert. Enjoy the concert. Hey, brother with the black. Brother with the black. With them flames on your hat. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is the one I'm talking to. All right. You, sir. <laughs> hey, brother. I just want to let you know we love you, brother. We want you to stop smoking black and mods. We need you to repent and keep God's commandments. Oh! Okay. Damn. That boy took a maze to learn who I was talking to, man. Go ahead. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Bring it out. Bring Someone it out. came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? How are you going to inherit eternal life, man? All right. Good sir with the glasses right here. What's your ethnicity? German. Do you think everlasting life is for you? It's not. I just wanted to make that clear. Okay. Everlasting life is for so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians, who are the Hebrew Israelites. Okay. Now let's learn how we're going to receive that everlasting life. Read. Right. Verse 17, why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Do what? Keep, keep the, the commandments. commandments. That's how you're going to receive that everlasting life. The first criteria to having the ability 
at Everlasting Life is being a Hebrew Israelite. That's right. If you are not a Hebrew Israelite, forget about Everlasting Life. It does not belong to you. All right, and if you don't know who the Hebrew Israelites are, it's so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians of Negro and Native Indian descent, man. So guess what? Everlasting life belongs to us. The blood of Christ is upon us and our children, man. The redemption and reconciliation is for us and us alone, man. Okay? This is extremely exclusive. It's not for anybody and everybody, contrary to what we've been taught, man. Okay? You see the devils that are walking upon the earth, the Caucasian man, the white devil, all right? Everlasting life is not for them, man. You don't believe I will all pray. Give that sister a round of applause. All right? You know what you need to do is start keeping God's commandments, sister. Okay? Go ahead. This is the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. The Most High God sent his son to redeem his people, man. Time and time again, we're told, oh, Jesus died for everybody. Jesus died for everybody. If that was the truth, he would have already returned. Right? But the true gospel, the true good news has not reached the four corners of the earth yet. The true good news is for you so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native, and Seminole Indians to recognize that you're, in fact, the Hebrew Israelites. God's chosen people, man. Okay? And for, and for that gospel to reach your hearts, you must keep God's law, statutes, and commandments, man. Read that again. It's Luke 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up the horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That was rude, ma'am. You know what you just demonstrated was a lack of self-respect. You understand? When you can't respect others, it's because you have no respect for yourself. So you better look within. You understand? She's snapping like we had a poultry club or something. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand that. If you can't show respect to someone else, it's because you don't respect yourself. Respect starts at home. So don't think that you're disrespecting me, right? I'm sorry. She doesn't respect God. This is 1 John 4 and 20. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, uh -huh. he is a liar. For, for he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God who he hath not seen? That's right. And how, how you going to love the brother if you don't love yourself? You see, it's a domino effect. I love me, so I love my brother, and with that, I'm a, I love the most high God. 